speaker is Jim Jensen. He's with the Environmental Credit Corporation. And he's going to be talk, talking about carbon credits. Hold on real quick for Susie. Uh, Dwayne has a question. The biggest challenge is in verification of the value of a cap and trade program, I assume. Who will verify this? Uh, would you like to respond to that, Susie? Who will verify? Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. I totally understand the the question. Who will verify the reductions? And at what cost to the producer? Uh, I would assume that he means the, the the credit that it's actually occurring. Whatever reduction. Right, and that's um, that's a a really difficult question, and that's one of the reasons why I think these assessment tools are are really important and why they need to be cost effective. They need to be something that the farmer can afford to do and not wipe out whatever benefits you can get from the marketplace. So right now I think though there, there are a lot of efforts underway to come up with um, definitions or calculations of the reductions based on a practice. Um, the reduction efficiencies, whether it's for water quality benefits or for uh, climate benefits. But obviously this is going to uh, change based on region and change based on how the farmer implements that practice. So we've got some broad tools, broad estimates, but I think we need far greater specificity and an ability for the farmer to be able to make those measurements. But again, it, it, this is tough. It's expensive. Uh, and in, in many cases, the tools are lacking. So either we're guessing or having to undervalue what the farmer is probably generating. So it, it's a tough issue that needs a lot of work. All right. And he had, had a follow-up. Will these reductions not have to be new practices? Uh, that's all going to depend on the program. Um, with water quality, that's defined state by state in many cases. Um, either it needs to be a new practice or if it's an annual practice, something that a farmer is already doing but they're still implementing it year after year, states are coming up with different definitions for that. But that, that certainly is a challenge. I mean, if you look at something like no-till and a farmer that, or, that is already doing it, you know, the market wants to generate new benefits, but you also want to try to figure out a way that for a farmer who's been doing something for a long time gets rewarded for that. So, uh, you know, we're kind of moving through trying to come up with those definitions. And again, it, it, um, it depends. I think we're moving towards a more national program in terms of climate, but certainly on water quality, it, it depends where you are and it, it changes. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to one more. And Don Smithson? is asking in the Ohio and Oregon water quality market, what is the level of farmer participation? I'm afraid I don't know. I can go to those websites or provide those websites, but um, I do not know the level of participation. But um, uh, I think that would be fairly easy to find out. We'll, all right. We'll track that down and, and try and get you a written response on that, Don. Uh, and the, the next question I think I'm going to hold off because I think uh, Jim may, may answer some of it in his presentation. And with that, uh, I think we're going to move on to Jim's presentation. So if you're ready to take over, Jim, we'll turn it over to you. 